everybody, check out these new features where you can use your iPhone to make an AAC device. Hey there, I'm Carrie Clark. It's going to take a minute to focus on me. There we go. <laughs> hey there, I'm Carrie Clark with SLP Solution. And today I am showing you some new updates that came out with the iOS 13 update. I just got this last night, so I'm not sure how new this is exactly, um, but I am pretty excited about it. So I'm going to show you some of the new built-in functionality that the iPhone now has to turn your iPhone into an AAC device. Now, I'll put my disclosure on here that this is not something that's going to completely replace an AAC device that has all the robust features for somebody who is nonverbal and needs this for all of their communication, but I really love these new features that you can program in so that somebody who can't speak could be able to communicate using their iPhone, some very simple messages, some pre-programmed messages, and even call for help, which I think is really neat. So I'm gonna show you these new features on the iPhone that just came out. Um, I really like this for adults who are home alone and need that extra um, support of knowing that they can communicate if they need to or call for help. Teenagers who are nonverbal, I think this would be great for them because everybody has a smartphone, so it's not going to be out of place for you to use your smartphone to, to communicate. So let me show you some of the, the features here. I'm going to turn up my volume so you can definitely hear this. Um, but so these are the ones that I put on there, and I know it's not going to focus probably. There we go. Um, these are the ones that I programmed in. These came from the ones that were pre-programmed into the iOS 13 under shortcuts. So if you're looking for these, if you see this new app right here called Shortcuts, ooh, the focusing, the focusing. The Shortcuts is where all of this is housed. And they have an entire section of accessibility shortcuts, which is where these AAC ones are. So here's one that I uh, found that was already pre-programmed and I edited it to make it my own. So that is. Hi, I'm Carrie. I have a fascia so I can't talk, but I can hear and understand you just fine. It may take me a moment to type out my responses to you, so please be patient. Okay, so I had it say, my name is Carrie, I have aphasia. I can't talk, but I can hear and understand you, in case you couldn't understand that. Um, and then it says, it asks me if I want to say something to the person. So I would say yes. And then it gives me this, where I can type in what I want to say. So as an AAC user, I would say, I would type in my question. And then I would hit OK. What is your name? And then it speaks my message for me. Super cool. So this would be great if you are in a situation and you can't speak for whatever reason, but you want to introduce yourself and let people know that you can understand them. Um, I programmed it to say I have aphasia, just as an example. You could program it to not say what your diagnosis is if you're not interested in sharing that information. Um, or you can program it to say anything you want. So you get to edit that feature, which is really cool. Okay, if you guys, I see some people are watching live. If you guys have questions about what we're doing here or if you missed part of it, go ahead and type those questions into the comments and let me know uh, what questions you have on this. Okay, so back to my home screen. I have all these saved on a home screen. So this is like my AAC screen. You can see I've got my other icons on other pages, but I set up a whole AAC screen, AAC screen based on what we had available. It's not focusing still. There we go. Um, another one I put in, whoop is this right here. This is a picture of my lovely husband. You can program it in so that when you click on a person's face, it will either text them or FaceTime them. So if you have somebody who's home alone and may need to access uh, another individual, they can easily text and call them now. I've got this one here. Whoops, just says, say something to the other person. So it gives me an option to say yes. And then it'll allow me to type in my what I want to say again, and it will speak it out loud. So I can. How are you? How are you? I can go back and do that one again. And I could, let's say I'm at a restaurant. Oops, hang on. Let's say I'm at a restaurant. I can make my order. I want the burger. I want the burger. So you can type anything in with that function. That's a really cool one. There is a quick speak, which gives you some choices. So if you have things that, I'm sorry about the focusing guys, this is the, the Facebook platform, not me. Um, if you've got some 
some things that you want them to be able to communicate, you can pre-program those in so that there are some choices already there. It is too noisy here. I need to go somewhere quieter. And you can change the voice on this, you can change the rate, um, you can change a lot of different things on this. You can also make a specific button to say a specific thing. So for me, I programmed in one that says I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, come on. <laughs> I need to go to the bathroom. Can you help me get there? So there's one. I did. I need a breathing treatment. I need a breathing treatment. So if you have somebody that needs to ask for medical help, there is a template in there for pain report. And it asks you, whoop, it asks you what, uh, where your pain is. So we can say uh, stomach pain. And then it'll say, where is the pain or what kind of pain? So you pick that. And then you can describe the pain. And you can rate the pain. And then it asks you if you want to speak it out loud. So this would be great if you have a patient in a hospital who just needs to be able to communicate with the nurses better. So we can say yes. October 9th, 2019, 10.48 a.m. My stomach hurts. Specifically, diarrhea. It's a nagging pain. Out of 10, it's a five. And then it gives you the option here of saving it as a note. So if you have a patient in a hospital who is needing to communicate their pain levels or symptoms, they can record their symptoms even when the nurse is not in the room, save it to a note, and then show the nurse when she comes back into the room the next time. So I love that feature as well. All right, I'm going to show you a couple more features on here. Um, if you're just joining us, this is the new AAC features on that are built into the iPhone. So we've got, ugh. okay, so then another one that I wanted to show you on here, I think I have to get my face out of it before, <laughs> before it will focus in. Um, another one I wanted to show you was this help. It says help message. So if I click on that, you can see here it's loading my poor husband. I have this pre-programmed to send my husband a message that says, I've activated my help button. I need you to contact me. And so you can see it says, message sent to your contact. My husband's gonna be like, is she okay? <laughs> I told him I was gonna be doing this. Um, so what that does is it sends the person a message that says, I've activated my help button, and it sends them your location. So uh, my husband is gonna get a text. <laughs> He's calling me right now. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> so uh, it says, I need you to contact me. And then it tells you the, the location of that person so they can find you if you need help. So that's really cool. <laughs> My poor husband. Sorry, babe. <laughs> okay, one more and then we'll wrap it up. The other thing that I think is really cool on here is they have this built in teeth brushing routine. So what this does is when you push the tooth brushing routine, it will give you the verbal cues of how to brush your teeth. So it'll say, get out your toothpaste and toothbrush. And then it'll wait an amount of time that it takes you to do that. And then it'll say, unscrew the cap to the toothpaste. And then it'll wait the amount of time it usually takes someone to do that. And then it'll give you the next cue. So they just, right now they just have one for toothbrushing, which I think would be, <laughs> my husband left me a voicemail. Um, I think that would be helpful if you have maybe a teenager with autism or um, has some other executive functioning problems where they have trouble remembering the steps to something. So you could have them use that to be more independent with toothbrushing, but you can also go in and edit this and change it to whatever else you want. So you could change it so that it's the steps to getting dressed in the morning or um, the steps for completing a task at work or at school. So if somebody needs those verbal reminders, you can program this in, you can change the amount of wait time that are in, in between each step and um, they can just activate that whenever they want. Let's go there uh, by just clicking that button and you can change the icon, you can change the color, you can make it a picture like I did with my husband's face. Get your toothbrush, toothpaste and cup. And so you can see it gives the prompt and then it waits the amount of time that you designated for it to wait and it'll give the next cue in just a moment. So I really love Open all of your this. toothpaste. Open your toothpaste. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna stop that one. But anyway, those are the new um, shortcuts that you can use. There's shortcuts for all kinds of stuff. I programmed one on my phone this morning for, it'll ask me what my three things are that I wanna get done today and add those to a note and then I can share it with a friend. So if I have an accountability buddy, all kinds of really cool stuff in here. And I'm gonna show you how to get there real quick. So if you have iOS, you have to update to the iOS 13, which is the new iOS update. 
And then you're going to come up here to shortcuts, which is a new icon. Let's see if I can get it to focus in. It's a new icon that just appeared on my phone when I, no, nope, it's not going to focus. Uh, there we go. It's a new icon that appeared on my phone when I updated. And when you click on that, it's going to give you, these are my shortcuts. If you come down here, this middle but or the one on the end says gallery. There we go. So if you click on gallery, there's this swipe bar at the top that has some options. Go to the one that says shortcuts for accessibility. And then there's all of the pre-made ones in here. Da, da, da. You can see all of these. You can make a QR code for your shortcuts. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So for this, I went to this speak meeting, speak meeting someone new is what it's called. And if you click on that, oops, hang on. Um, if you click on it and click on the actions, you can see it's got this map of like, here's all the things that happen. So you can just click on that and edit the text. Um, this one specifically had more prompts than I liked. So I took some of the prompts out by just deleting those. Um, I changed the script of what it says. And then at the end, it gave this option of, for longer conversations, I prefer using text messages or email. Would you like to, me to share my contact card with you? And then you can automatically hit yes or no, and it will share your contact with that information or with that person. So anyway, there's a lot of pre-built ones in here. I just went in and edited these. I just changed them up and took out the pieces I didn't want so that I just had left the features that I was looking for. If I do have a complaint on this, it's that it's not the easiest to set up your own custom ones yet. But I'm assuming that as more people are using this function and word gets out, Apple will add more development into this feature. So share this video. Let's get more people using it, playing with it, seeing how it works. And that will allow Apple to see that this is a legitimate function that people want. And I do think that this is something that would be really great for people with disabilities of all kinds, adults and children. So I do want the word to get out on this. I was looking around this morning on um, Facebook and on Google search. I couldn't find much about this feature at all. So I think this is something that they kind of slipped in and they're not really sure if it's going to take off. So I would love for it to. <laughs> I want this to be something that more developers are looking at and more companies are including uh, resources for people who are nonverbal and with all kinds of disabilities. So share this video with your friends on Facebook and, um, and on any other social media platform. Let's get the word out so we can get more people using it and they can keep improving it. All right, if you guys have questions, add them into the comments. Um, I'm here to, to answer those. And if you want more information on working with children who are nonverbal, um, please head over to slpsolution.com or speechandlanguagekids.com. We have lots of great free resources over there. We also have a community for speech language pathologists where it is the largest international community of speech language professionals. You can come in there and get support, get resources, all kinds of great stuff. Thanks, Jessica, for watching. All right, you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll talk soon.